Time now to welcome into the Eagles Live podcast presented by Lincoln Financial Group, the OG of the Philadelphia Eagles defensive line, Brandon Graham. You like that? Oh, the OG. Hey, the OG. I, 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 embrace, I accept that role. Very nicely. And that's what I want to talk to you about, Brandon, because I don't often get to talk to people who are going to be Philadelphia Eagles for their entire career. I'm so happy that you're still here when, honestly, in early March, I thought you were gone. Man, I, I couldn't imagine being gone and knowing what type of team we had, you know. So I'm, I'm glad we got it right, and I'm glad, um, you know, to be back. I have your bio in front of me here, and really, it's it's amazing. I'd like to talk to you, if you could, about the time you were drafted to now. I mean, it's been a crazy career for you. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, memories of being being the, the first-round pick of the Philadelphia Eagles. Where were you? What did you do? How did you celebrate? Uh, I was at the Townsend Hotel when I got selected uh, back in Michigan, Birmingham. And then, um, you know, I remember – having to do an interview right outside of the hotel. A couple guys from Detroit uh, Detroit News and um, Detroit Free Press was outside, and they did that. And then I remember, man, right now I got to get ready to go fly to Philly the next day, come in, the reporters, you know, I greeted everybody, just excited, man, did a whole photo shoot outside and, you know, went over, talked to Ike, uh, Ike Reese, and I forgot who else he was on the show with that year, uh, but we was at the stadium. They had their show at the stadium. And, um, you know, man, that day... That day was just the best. That was the best feeling ever. You know, it's still the best feeling ever. You have great memories of it. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. it, it meant a lot to you. Did you, you obviously expected being a first round draft pick? Uh, well, you know, they were saying late first, uh, early second. You know, and then they say second, third. You know, so much. But I think uh, what helped me was the Senior Bowl. You know, the Senior Bowl. I was confident that I was going to get picked up somewhere. You know, just didn't know where. Did you think you'd come into the NFL and be a star right away? I mean, I didn't, uh, I felt like I could, I could be, you know, and, uh, you know, that was my mindset, but I felt like uh, with me getting hurt my first year was a good thing for me too, because I started to take, I, I took for granted, I felt, you know, early being young, just took a, took for granted some of the stuff of taking care of your body and doing a lot of things uh, that Trenton was trying to get me to do, um, you know, and I felt like when I got hurt, I ended up starting to do it after the fact. You like know? what, like what kind of, like how like, didn't you, you know, treat your body well? I didn't. You know, Did massage, you eat poorly? I ate poorly, you know. My mom was cooking me everything I wanted, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, it just I just felt like, um, you know, it could have been better. But I know we all young, we all young and we all having fun and, and, and doing things. But, you know, sometimes some people got to sit down and grow up fast. And I felt like that was my case. When you were young, Brandon, not that you don't now, but you're a family man and you've got kids. Did you did you have a social life? Like, did you live it up as a young guy mm -hmm. in Philadelphia? Oh man, I lived it up. Shoot, high school lived it <laughs> up, uh, college, and then by the time I got to the league, you know, I was doing stuff, but I was picking and choosing yeah. what I wanted to do. I, I didn't have to be at everything, you know, because you know it kind of got a little old for me because I mean, um, I did it a lot in high school and college. So, if old Brandon Graham could talk to young Brandon Graham, what would he tell him? Um. St stay consistent or try to, you know, strive to be consistent because that was my biggest thing. I used to always be, I, I feel like, you know, sometimes as a player, I didn't, I gave my, my all, but I felt like I could have pushed it a little, a little harder. And that's what I feel like I'm doing now. Like, I feel like now I'm trying to run to the ball like no other, you know, I'm trying to make sure that, man, I'm just out there just itching to get out, you know, and not surviving sometimes because sometimes you know the game could be long and you got long drives and you get caught in there I want to be able to you know just eat right make sure that I turn and run to the ball and you know sack quarterbacks and if I may ask this personal question the first big check you got whatever it was whatever how much was the check and what was the luxury item did you have one luxury item that you spent big uh, money on well um my first actual check was like 380 something uh signing bonus uh when i first signed one of the first money i got you know coming in was like three hundred eighty thousand dollars. yeah for three. a 22 year old kid yeah did you go oh! i mean it was nice to see you know <laughs> and then um i still got you know it's funny i still got all my emails of my financial advisor uh was just telling me you know hey you just got your money in this is what we're gonna do this is how we're gonna set you up you know, and all this stuff, and then more should be coming in this day. It's like, man, you know, you look back on all that stuff back in 2010, like, damn, man, I forgot I used to talk to this person, or I used to be, you know, uh, into it with this person, or whatever, man. It was, it's cool to kind of look back, and I think uh, when I first got that, the biggest thing I wanted was a watch at that time, and, uh, 
you know, it was a, a U-boat. I got a U-boat. Okay. Mm -hmm. I remember you tooled around with that four-door. Oh, yeah, the Porsche. Yeah. That, that yeah. sweet Yeah, that, was, that was sweet. Porsche. Did you yeah. buy that? I, I leased it. You oh, know, you leased I leased it. all my cars, you know, because, you know, you're switching it up. I'll buy something like a Ferrari or something, or something if I'm somewhere nice uh, when I'm done playing. But right now, I'm just leasing. Brandon, when did it really, when did football really, when did it really click in in the NFL? You had the knee injury as a rookie. It took some time to come back. You seemed like you were getting into a groove, and then boom, you're a stand-up outside linebacker, which was a huge change with Chip Kelly as the head coach. Yeah, I think, um, you know, with the knee, it took me about two years for real to really get that confidence back, you know, because uh, I had microfracture, had ACL and meniscus. And How'd it you was, do that again? I forget what game that uh, was. It was Dallas. We okay. was in Dallas. Uh, that was my first year. Um, we ended up winning that game. McCoy ended up getting the first down to win it, you know. Um, but, yeah, it was – I think it was like week 14 – because we had like a couple games left and um, we ended up playing, losing to um, the Green Bay. Whoever won between us and Green Bay yep, was going yep, that year. Yep. And so uh, Green Bay won. But man, um, it took me about two years. And then when I came back, uh, finally, you know, here we go. We got a new coach, you know, and then now I got to learn stand up. Then I didn't come in right now. I mean, uh, losing 20 pounds. I had to lose 20 pounds coming in and I didn't lose it. Uh, when we first got back in April until we until we got to camp, I had ended up losing it. But it was just that was the first time, you know, I played linebacker since I was in high school. And, you know, it was um, you know, it was it was interesting. It was it was cool because they they used me and T. Cole. I, I was thankful to have T. Cole, you know, at least because he was a guy that had to learn just like me. He hated it. Oh, he hated it. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> Shoot. I mean, I learned to love it. Um, you know, we all did it. Uh, but, you know, uh, they brought in Connor. And, you know, I was rotating between the three of us. And so, you know, uh, I had to work my way up, you yeah. know, and that's it. That's all I had to do. And I felt like, you know, it was good for me because it, it prepared me for this moment. Life is good for Brandon Graham. Uh, life is always good, man. Um, it's really good because I got two kids now. I got a baby. I mean, I uh, got a wife at the house, you know, that's taking care of everything. Um, and then, you know, like I say, I just got to come out here and focus on, on, on ball. And when I'm at home. I'm at home with the kids. And an almost daily occurrence, an almost daily scene here at the NovaCare Complex. Maybe 7.30 in the morning, I walk into the cafeteria. You're always in line getting your eggs or whatever you're getting. Mm -hmm. And you're always on FaceTime talking to one of your babies. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you, like being a dad is really natural and fantastic for you, isn't it? I, I want to talk to you about being a father and... and why you love it so much? Why you embrace that role so much? Well, you know, living in a single parent household, um, you know, I wish I was able to live with both parents. Uh, but, you know, I had to become the man in the house because it was just me and my mom and my sister. And so I had to take on a lot of the responsibilities early, you know, as a, as a young man. And, um, you know, like now uh, having a whole family in the household, you know, I, I want to make sure that I spend as much time as I can. Because I know how I felt growing up. You know, I would love for all the support, you know, in my games, you know, my mom and my daddy there. I didn't care who else was there. It didn't matter. Uh, but, you know, I was just just the support. And I want to make sure that I support them and be at everything I could be at. And so FaceTime is a different time uh, with technology. So I'm able to FaceTime. The wife know, you know, my schedule on when I am can FaceTime. Most of the time she beat me to it, you yeah. know. And so I just try to make sure that I don't uh, waste this time that, uh, that I got being a father. And just do some of the stuff that I wish, you know, I could have did it growing up. And, you know, like my baby girl, she a thrill seeker like me. So I might take her to the park. I might take her to an amusement park. Um, I'll, I'll take her swimming. Beach blitz know. when she's a yeah. baby. Yeah, beach blitz, stuff like that, <laughs> you know. So now I got baby boy. I want to see what he into. You know, it's going to be cool. Uh, but I just try to make sure I don't miss no time. Will you let him play football? Uh, you know, I, I'm going to introduce him to a lot of different things. And then it's on him what he want to do. I'm not going I'm not going to push him away. I feel like the game is getting better and a lot safer, but I do understand no matter no way around it, you know, we're not made to play football anyway, but you know, it's a risk that we take regardless, but I think that they are doing a better job as far as, you know, not as much banging at practice and, you know, really it's just all for the game. Brandon, what did you learn from your mom about about sacrifice? Uh, well, you know, just knowing that you got to trust in that process uh, when she sacrificed, um, you know, just when we got older, you know, she trusted me to watch over my sisters in the household, you know, while she going for 14 hours sometimes. And, you know, we come from school. I go I might do after school program then pick my sister up. Then we go. We, we walk at home. That's when you can really walk around a lot more uh, back 
than back then. But um, you know, uh, I felt like you know with her, she just trusted. She had a good group of people that she trusted, and um, you know, she had to make sure she took care of her her business and and uh, work work hard. Do you have a relationship with your father? Yeah, yep. Oh yeah, my daddy was always in my life. Uh, it's just they just never got married or anything. They just got it. Um, you know, high school. And, you know, just had me early. Mama didn't go to, my mama had a scholarship to Michigan State, but she didn't go because she was pregnant. And, you know, she wanted to stop her life for me. And What'd she play? My sister. She just was uh, uh, academic. Oh, academic yep, scholarship. Academic. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who's the athlete in the family? Mom, dad, My both? daddy. My daddy played ba- basketball. And okay. he, he played football too, but basketball was where he, uh, he um, where he went. And he was down in uh, Lincoln University, um, down in Missouri. And I know that, um, you know, he was big time, you know, back then in high school. But, you know, with him, he just, you know, trouble found him. Brandon, what do you think about this 2019 football team? What, I, do, you have, do you have a sense? I mean, I have a really good feeling. You know, I know that we got an opportunity right now. And we, and I mean, man, that was one of the biggest things why I wanted to come back. Even though I knew I wanted to come back anyway, it's just, man, I would be sick to be on another team knowing what type of team we got. And, you know, to not to be leading the charge here, you know, uh, to be, you know, helping uh, with the 2019 Eagles team. That's amazing. You, you, you gave up what could have been a lot more money. Yeah, you know, but I felt like stuff, I mean, you know, with me, I took care of whatever I got, you know, and, um, and I, I, I really felt like, you know, man, I just want to be somewhere where I'm comfortable. I've been here the whole time, and it's, and it's pretty cool that, you know, when you only been in one spot and you tell people that because, you know, I feel like, you know, uh, it's a lot of stuff that I went through, and I just didn't want to throw it away like that if I if I if I could if uh, I could control that. What are good financial lessons that we can all learn from you? What do, what is the right thing to do for football players with their money? Um, well, you know, take care of you. You know, uh, um, I know people always. Everybody has bills. Everybody has issues. We all got stuff that we we got our vices that we love and you know sometimes some of the vices might take over a friendship sometime and you know people want what they want and you know you got to learn to tell people no and you know that feeling on the inside you know on when you're supposed to do that because sometimes you could be a crutch for people and then you start to turn them into a monster that you didn't know that you could create from just helping people all the time you know you really got to stay disciplined with yourself and stay true to yourself because most of the time people give money because people guilt them you know I know I know I was that's that was hard for me in the beginning but me having a family and having kids now it's like man man no nah, you know I'm, I'm 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 selling them short you know we worked too hard out here today was hard you know we just practiced 10 hours ago and we had to come out here and go hard again and so um if I could just say take care of yourself because eventually you're gonna have a family whoever you are girl male female you know it, it don't matter just take care of your responsibilities and and just, you know, pray for other people. It's the saddest thing that I experienced in this job is seeing former players who worked so hard when they were young kids, made all that money, and then they come back five, six, seven years later, and they really don't have a yeah. plan. They don't have anything. It makes me sad. I know, man. You know, and then, you know, ego is involved with some people. You know, some people feel like it can't happen to them. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, sometimes you see a number that you think, man, I knew if I can get this, I, man... I know I, I'm good for life, and yeah, you should have been good for life. But if you spending fifty to a hundred thousand a month, and what you can easily do, because if you giving and you living your life the way you want to live it, you know sometimes expenses is be be like twenty thousand itself because mm-hmm. you are helping other people. Yours, your yours your, yourself might cost ten thousand. Then you got another ten thousand of, of people that you helping. And then next thing you know, you got to do this forever, and you're not even thinking. You got to cut off. Maybe you might be broke when you hit 55 you know you keep this lifestyle up or if you start slowing down you know you might can stretch it to to the 80s you know depending on you know what you into but like people just got a budget man like you got a budget yo yo every month yo every day because it's easy to just swipe you know i think about how many swipes i had in a month i'm like dang Mm -hmm. you know and you just not even thinking about it you know but you know, uh, Bank of America show you how much you spent that month. <laughs> you spent you spent time watching. This, oh don't man, you? I be watching it, man, because yeah. you know it, it's like, man, people. I didn't I didn't got guilty so much in the beginning because you know. It was what do you people, mean guilty? Like people, like, like, you know, friends, people, family saying. You know, people like you know talking to my mama, and making her feel bad, and then now, 
my mama feeling a way towards me and because other people make her feel like I'm supposed to do more. And it's like, if you keep everybody, if you keep our relationship tight, people ain't got to know what we do, you know? So if you, the and I go, part. so if you and I go out for drinks, am I buying? I mean, you know, I buy, but you know, it's, it should be a back and forth thing, you uh, know. You buy first like, you round, know, love by second yeah, round. Yeah, second round, you know, you shouldn't expect me to do it the <laughs> right, whole night. Right, you right. know, and that's what happens sometimes, you know, and then that's when you kinda gotta reevaluate some of the people that you're around because, you know, it's it's you should wanna be I will never go nowhere without no money. And then on top of that, I'm not gonna go somewhere where I feel I'm not able to keep up at least, you know, buy around, you know, or do something. You know, I just don't wanna me just uh, I know I got a lot of pride for that, you know, and then on top of that, I'm not going to let it kill me, but I'm not going to go nowhere either that that I'm going to set myself up for failure. Do you walk into a restaurant in Philadelphia like a normal person? Oh, ever? Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I might sneak through. I might get a guy and be like, hey, man, it's crazy. People don't even know you, you know, or they might say something like that. But um, I'd be like, it's all good. You know, I don't come in all. I play for the Eagles, you know. I, I don't feel entitled. I I'll wait just like everybody else. I just want to know: Have you since the Super Bowl? Have you actually spent money on a drink or on a meal in the city of Philadelphia? You know what? It's sprinkled around real good. Like sometimes, you know, yeah, I got to I'm I'm gonna pay. I'm going in there thinking I'm gonna pay. Yeah. And as soon as like uh, we I went out to um, uh, Double Knot, next you know the lady say, "Oh, your meal's already paid for." I'm like, "Dang, they just want you to take a picture." Oh, okay, that's fine, yeah, and that's cool, you yeah. know. It ain't nothing I could do. I had my card out, I was ready, and you know, and then I look at the people, I thank them, you know, go say what's up, you know, get my hugs, you know, all that stuff, and then I'm out. All you right, know? but it, it sprinkled around really good. Though. Some days I'm I'm not expecting it. It, it catch me by surprise. I'll be like, oh, okay, that was that was cool. You're a hero. All right, I got two games for you. All right, okay, we're gonna do one game. It's called Famous Grams. Mm. Right? Brandon Graham, you get it? Uh, hold right. on, hold on. Famous Grams. Grams. I know, uh, right. I know. All right, here we go. Number one. This Graham is a delicious, crunchy treat, often accompanied by a glass of milk. Oh, yeah, you know Graham Crackers. Graham Crackers, that's nice. Number two, this Graham is a playmaking tight end currently playing with Green Bay, who was, like you, drafted in 2010. Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham, okay. This Graham was an inventor long ago, credited with inventing the first telephone. Brandon Graham. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alexander Graham. There we go. There we go. Alexander Graham. Bell. Bell. Ding ding. Yeah. All right. That, these two, I don't know if you're going to get. I, I, I'm just not sure. This okay. is old school. This Graham is 100 years old. I, I think he's 100 years old uh, and is w one of the most famous evangelists in American history. I made this question up. My, my fact checker, Chris Barletto, is chuckling over there. I is this guy alive or dead? He is dead as of February on, 21st, 2018. All right. All right, this guy lived to be 100 years old and is one of the most famous evangelists in uh, American history. Billy Graham. Good job. Good job, yeah. Billy Graham. Okay, Billy Graham. last one. This Graham played for the Cleveland Browns in the 1940s and 1950s and was one of the greatest quarterbacks in the history of the league, member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I got him on my Madden cards. Otto Graham. BG. <laughs> Nicely done. All right, last ones. Five questions for Brandon Graham. Uh, who are your best friends from all of your nine plus seasons here with the Philadelphia Eagles? Uh, T. Cole. You hunt with him? Oh, yeah. Um, JP. Okay. You know, Fletch and uh, Vinny. Okay. All yeah. linemen. Linemen yeah. stick together. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just, it just happened like that, you yeah. know, and then we bring some other people around, but, you know, that's the tight, that's the tight knit group. That uh that start that started me and then you know Vinny and, and Fletch kind of came in. See, Trent Cole to me is one of the most underrated Eagles of all time. Man, let me tell you. Nobody worked harder, nobody played harder. Love that guy. And then love the game, you know. Love the game. It was happy all the time, you know. Some sometimes you get Trent mad, but he take it out on, on yeah. the field. Yeah. So. He's doing well. I love seeing him. Oh, all yeah. right. Uh the craziest thing you did to celebrate winning Super Bowl fifty two? Uh the craziest thing I did. Maybe not that night, but in the, in the months after. Man, that dang on parade. I yeah. drunk too fast. And, <laughs> man, I was hurting by the time we got to the damn Were you? Uh, first little bridge. Uh, first, uh, what's that, 76 right there? Yeah. Uh, going across the bridge. I was I was through. I was I was the only, the only bus that didn't drink. Not one drop of Man, alcohol. they was throwing beers. and I, was I just, thought they were throwing beers at me. I didn't know what nah, they were they doing. They were throwing beers I, for you to you drink. drink. I know. I and we was out there stone cold and it up. <laughs> oh, you're shotgunning? Oh, it? man, doing everything. Good for you, man. Fun. How would you rank these three career moments, one through three? One, being a first round draft pick. Two, starting in your first NFL game. Three, playing and winning a Super Bowl. Say it again. 
one through three, most the high, the most the most memorable one, number okay. one, first round draft pick, starting in the first NFL game, playing and winning a Super Bowl. Um, winning the Super Bowl is number one. Okay. Then um, draft pick was number two, and then uh, first game. Okay. Number I can four. remember my first game, Jaguars. Okay. Uh, we had a bunch of family family issues that game because everybody wanted to come to the first game. And, and you have to buy all the tickets. And then they don't free. realize yeah. that I'm in camp. So yeah. we in Lehigh. So we ain't going able. I mean, we're not able to stay here. We got to go back to Lehigh. Then we off. Then we go home if we want to go home. But you know, uh, yeah. But that's why I How remember mine. How many tickets my, you have to buy for that game? No, I ain't had to buy much. Uh, people drove here because we was here. But you know, some people w wanted to spend more time than they did. I'm like, look, I'm in camp. Y'all wanted to come to my first game. This is what the first game is. Preseason game. And camp. Okay. You know, so, oh, the preseason. Yeah, preseason. Okay. Yeah. That's how I looked at it, like okay. my first NFL, because that was the first one, you know, I was playing. The first regular season game, Kevin Cobb got knocked yep, out against the Packers. And Michael Vick came back and came into the game. Yep. And the whole season turned around. Man, how crazy when, is that? When we played the, the Packers to start it off, and all we got to do is beat the Packers in the first round. Yeah. And, and then we go to the Super Bowl. Well, no, no, no. There were still other games to win. I know, but they breezed through after uh, that. They though. did breeze through. They after breezed that. through. Okay. All right. Number four. Describe how your body feels the day after a game. Uh, you know what? You still numb. It's the second day. Uh, it's, man, and that's when you find out where where your nicks and bruises at because sometimes you still kind of you know high on your on your whatever it is that you on. Right. <laughs> Not even like it's just like just uh, adrenaline. Yeah. Just adrenaline and. You know, and then uh, when when you kind of calm down on that Tuesday, that's when I feel the most. You know, but that's what it feel like. It feel like, man. Sometimes I feel like I got like it's just real sore right here. Your head, from, your from forehead. Hitting, you know, you hitting with your head up. You always hitting with your face. You know, you know that helmet always gets you right up in here. Then uh, you know I might have scratches on my arms somewhere that I ain't know I had them. And then like um, you know my legs feel heavy. And you get a massage. I mean, most of the time by Wednesday, you be feeling good. So the massage is what gets you back? Uh, really, the lift gets you back. The lift on Tuesday be getting you back. Um, or sometimes Wednesday, depending on uh, if, if he give us Monday, Tuesday. Victory Monday, Tuesday. Have you climbed into the cryotherapy chamber yet? Oh, yeah. Man. How is that? It's nice. Uh, you can't go past three minutes, but you know. You got to, it's like, man, it's like being outside, butt naked in the cold. <laughs> but you just got to fight it for the first, like, 30 seconds, you know, that initial shock. And then after that, you kind of get numb. And man. it takes all the inflammation out of your mm -hmm. body. Okay. Yep. Last question. Three head coaches since your time here, Andy wow. Reid, Chip Kelly, Doug Peterson. Your thoughts on what they did have done to help shape your career? Um, I feel like Coach Coach Reid was, was good because, um, you know, I wanted to have a relationship with the head coach, and he didn't talk to rookies at that time. So I didn't really get to know Coach Reid like how I know, know, know of him now. And then um, – you know, as a vet now, you know, I, I talk to Doug a lot, too. You know, the head coaches, even with Chip, I ain't talked to him much because Chip, he was he was he was available, but he wasn't available, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, but I felt like Chip shaped me up in a way where, you know, it got me thinking about nutrition and got me thinking about all the sports science stuff for real, because some of that stuff was was good stuff. You know, the sleep. I know I needed to sleep more. Um, you know, he, he helped me. And that mindset of, of, of taking care of my body. Uh, but, you know, when Doug got here, he just, man, he brought a, a new school coach Reed to, to, the, to, uh, to the Eagles. And, you know, um, he, he treats you just like a man, like what um, like Coach Reed did. And, you know, he don't hold grudges. He, he always addressed the elephant in the room. And, you know, he taught me some things on that. Like, you know, it's okay to have some controversy, you know, as long as we can handle it as men. And, you know, that's my next – that's been – you know, the thing that we've been doing good as a team, like we address stuff that we need to address so that stuff don't linger or get in the media of stuff that we should have been addressed. Yeah, a lot of stuff happens that doesn't get in the media. Right. You ever been in a fight in a locker room? Uh, You know what? Nope, mm -hmm. I haven't. You know, I got into arguments before, but, you know, I'll never let it get past that because, you know, um, it's no point because eventually we're going to be saying sorry anyway. Yeah. Unless it's out here and somebody did some dirty stuff on a play and I just – wasn't feeling it, and I might throw some, you know, just because I just want to keep them honest. <laughs> BG, great things ahead. 2019, thanks so much, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Brandon Graham, the Eagles Live Podcast. We thank you for joining us here. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Brandon Graham, we are looking forward to a huge 2019 season.